Hi everyone, welcome to day 14 of Advent of Code 2023. Today we're dealing with another grid problem. There's a bunch of stones in a grid that we need to roll around. So in a moment, I'm going to explain the puzzles and my approach to them. If you want to check out my code, it's going to be in the description below. The GitHub repository contains my solutions to all days of Advent of Code, so be sure to check that out. But I'm going to be explaining the puzzles, my approach. Uh, first, let's see a time lapse of me solving the puzzles. So today was not as hard as yesterday in my opinion, but there were still uh, a few mix-ups that I had. There were some assumptions that I shouldn't have made that I did make that cost me a lot of time in debugging. So I'll go through what those are, but let's go through the puzzles. So today we are figuring out the parabolic reflector dish that the Valley of Mirrors points to. And we're doing another grid problem today, so that's really fun. We have a grid of stones. Some of them are cubical stones and some of them are round stones. So the cube ones are hashtags and the round ones are O's. The rounded uh, stones will roll around when we tilt the entire map, so or the dish. So the dish is the grid right here. And when we tilt the dish a certain way, it can be one of four directions. The round stones will roll in that direction until they can't go any further. So in this example, we have this grid. I'm going to say grid instead of dish because it's just easier for me to remember. We have all these round stones and when we tilt the entire grid up, then all of the round stones are going to roll upwards. And that is what this second map represents. So you can see all of the O's are now basically shoved up to the top uh, and they keep rolling until they can't roll any further. There's no horizontal movement, it's purely vertical movement. So our task is essentially to tilt all of the stones upwards in our input. And the input's like pretty big. Uh, let me grab it real quick right here so you can see there's a lot of stones and we need to tilt all of them upwards keep rolling them up until they can't anymore and figure out what the load is on the grid the total load is computed by taking the y coordinates of all of the stones after they've been rolled and uh, basically adding them together so the y coordinate starts from one at the bottom and goes up to n at the top if there's n total rows so you can see in this diagram all of the stones in this row are worth 10 all of the ones in this one are worth nine so on and so forth you add up all of the values of all of the stones and that's going to be our total load for part one then what i did was create this function uh, called process call which takes in a column and basically it tells us what the sum of the values of all the stones in that column is so i'm gonna fetch the small input so we can actually see uh, what this will do is it'll take a column, so let's say column equals zero, and it'll start at the zeroth index of this column, and it'll find contiguous stretches of open space. So open space is any space that uh, doesn't have any hashtags in it, so stuff that isn't surrounded by cubicle stones. Oh, I should specify that cubicle stones don't move at all, and they also block movement, which is kind of... Um, what we should expect from cubes, I guess. They don't roll like round stones do. So we find every contiguous stretch of stones in this uh, column. And basically, again, that means uh, stretches that don't have any hashtags in them. So everything is separated. We take every contiguous stretch and we count the number of stones in that stretch. Once we have that, we put all of them at the top and we add together their row numbers. And how we do that is we have a while loop, which takes this index i, which is the current row, and it just goes down we're going to figure out the location of the first pound sign. And actually, we are, we are assuming that the... Um, just kidding, we're not making any assumptions. We're basically going down the row until uh, we hit something that's not a hashtag. So basically, we're bypassing the first stretch of hashtags, and then we're going to hit an open space, and we're going to keep counting down that open space until we hit another row of hashtags. So the first hashtag we see, we're going to stop. Once we have that, we have a contiguous block of stuff that is not hashtag, so it's all open space. And while we are iterating through that open space, we're going to count how many stones there are in there. And that's going to be stored in this variable count. We also have the start index of this contiguous stretch, which is going to be helpful when we add together the values of all the stones. So we're going to iterate through the rows from the start index to the ending index, not the ending index, but the last index that there is a stone in, which is exactly the starting index plus the number of stones, uh, round stones, I should specify. And the row number is simply n, which is the total minus our current index, because we're numbering our rows indices from zero uh, to n minus one, going from top to the bottom, but the numbers uh, themselves are actually one from the bottom to the top when we're computing our answer. So we need to do n minus the row index to get the like row value. For all of the stones, therefore, in this column, we have computed their uh, row value and have summed them up. And we just do that for every single column. 
So that's very nice. We're doing it by column because stones can't roll horizontally. So processing vertically works really well. All right, and we just do that for every column, add up the answers, and that's it for part one. For part two, the extension is not too much more complicated. Essentially, what we have to do is instead of just uh, rolling north, we have to roll north and then west and then south and then east. And that counts as one cycle. So rolling west, south and east is the same idea as rolling north. Uh, basically, you just move all the stones in that direction until they can't anymore for west and east. The movement is restricted, again, to within a row, so there's no uh, vertical movement. And for south rolling, there's no vertical movement. So, uh, sorry, there's no horizontal movement, so it's just up and down for south and north. Four of these movements uh, constitutes a cycle, and we have to do 10 to the power of 9 cycles. So, 1 billion cycles. Later, we have to compute the load on uh, the north support beams, which is just load of the grid. So how do we do this without taking too much time? Um, this is difficult because basically doing a billion um, iterations is going to be very costly, especially when we're running in a language like Python, which I like to use. It's kind of slow, so we have to find something that's efficient. And how do we do this? Well, I made some utility functions, which I thought would be helpful uh, for reducing the amount of redundant code. So instead of writing another function uh, for tilting wet left, right, and down for west, east, and south, I just kept the same function, which takes the grid and tilts all the stones upwards. We're going to write more functions later that rotates the grid so that we can effectively uh, tilt the stones left, right, or down. Um, but first, let's go over this function, which tilts all the stones up. This is just a modification of what we have in part one, except instead of counting the number of stones, we have to move them all to the top. So remember this for loop, uh, or this, yes, this for loop where we basically counted uh, the row numbers and added them together? Well, we're going to replace that with another for loop, which just takes the locations of the round stones from start to start plus count, which is where the stones will roll to once they've rolled up. And we're actually going to replace those values in the input array, uh, which is called grid. For all of the other stones then in that contiguous stretch of unblocked space, we're going to replace it with empty space. So this just takes any grid of stones and it moves all the round ones up until they can't anymore. Now we have rotate functions, which are basically um, helpful for us to be able to tilt not just up, but left, right, and down as well. Uh, because what we can do is to tilt left, you basically just tilt the entire grid right and sorry, right is this way, tilt the entire grid right, roll up, and then re-rotate uh, the grid left. And what that will do is it'll make the new up direction uh, left, and then it'll tilt in that direction, and then it'll rotate back so that the up direction is as it usually is. So that's what we do. Um, th I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. Instead of rotating every single time we want to do left, right, or down, we could just rotate uh, four times per cycle, but this made a little bit more sense to me. I actually don't know if it made more sense to me. Um, it's just what came to mind at first. So these functions, I'm not going to go into too much detail about because all they do is just take a list of characters and rotates them 90 degrees. So the actual important part is this for loop over here. What we're going to do is rotate or cycle through the grid. So do this northwest, uh, southeast thing um, until we get to a state that we have seen before. And how we're going to do that is we're going to maintain the states that we've seen before. So this, uh, these two dictionaries are going to respectively take in a cycle number and the grid that it represents um, or the grid at that stage. And the second dictionary scene is going to take in a, I guess, hash of the current state value and return the cycle number that it corresponds to. This is going to come in helpful, this scene dictionary, when we uh, look up our current grid and see if it's been seen before. So uh, this function do cycle just does the rotate and the tilting four times. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about that because it should be pretty intuitive. If you want to see my code, by the way, it's linked to in the description. So be sure to check that out. Anyways, these two dictionaries we're going to populate as we simulate the cycle. So we're going to do all of the cycles at first uh, and just compute the grid every single time and store the like state of the grid every time we do a cycle. And this, again, first dictionary is going to tell us basically, given the current state, what is the cycle that it corresponds to, helpful for lookup when we need to look up stuff in the future. And the section, second dictionary basically just takes in the current cycle and tells us what was the state. So this is just tracking history. We could do this with a regular list that might be more intuitive in terms of data structure usage, but what's done is done. So um, we have this for loop now, which goes through all the states and records a bunch of useful information. Now to tell when we can stop, 
we take a look at the current state and see have we seen it before if we've seen it before then all the stuff in the future we don't need to re-simulate we can just take what we already have and we know it's going to happen again in the future because given a singular state if we've already seen it like we know it's going to happen because what's going to happen is solely determined based on the current state so if we are cycling through and we've seen something that we've seen before we can compute uh what the answer is going to be by taking a look at which of the states that we've already seen corresponds to the one billionth state. This requires some modular arithmetic and thinking through, um, but basically what we're going to do is we have a left and we have a right. This is the first instance of the current state and this is the current instance of the current state. What we're going to do is take one billion, subtract the, I guess, first instance of the state that we currently see. So we're gonna shift everything back. We're going to mod the results. So. 1 billion minus this first index by the period, which is like the number of steps it takes for this state to cycle, um, and then add back the original so that we have an index that we know the state of. So that's just a math. This index corresponds to the cycle, which is identical, identical to the 1 billion state. So we look up uh, what state that is, so what grid that is, and compute the answer by using our handy dandy north load function, uh, which just computes the total load on the grid. Where I wasted the most time was definitely on this north load function. What I did at first was take the same code I had for part one and put it into a single function. Turns out you don't need anything that complicated because for part one, I was assuming that you roll all the stones north first and then compute the sum of the row values to get the load. We don't need to do that for part two. We just need to sum up the row values for all the stones as they are in the grid. We don't need to tilt anything up. So I messed up by doing that. Um, I used the code from part one that I shouldn't have reused and that cost me a lot of time because I was getting numbers that I wasn't supposed to get. Anyways, moral of the story, uh, always check your assumptions and don't reuse functions if they don't do what you want them to do. Anyhow, that's it for day 14 of Advent of Code 2023. Today I got like rank 79 on part one, which is pretty good, but then on part two I got like 2000 because of that assumption. So anyways. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your viewership. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And I'll, wa I'll see you tomorrow for day 15. Where I wasted the most time on part two was definitely the north load function because all I had to do was just sum up the row values for every stone in the grid. We don't have to tilt the stones up at all. What I did at first was reuse the function I had in part one, which computes the total load given that you rotate all, like roll all the stones up first. So we don't need to do that. And if you do that, the answer is going to be wrong. Um, so I had to like just write a new function. It was pretty simple, but my assumption cost me a lot of time. So moral of the story is always check your assumptions and don't reuse code that doesn't do what you want to do. Anyhow, on part one today, I got rank 79, which is pretty good. And then on part two, I got like rank 2000 or something is pretty bad um, because of the assumptions that I made. But anyhow, hope you got something from this video. Thanks for watching day 14 of Advent of Code 2023, and I'll see you tomorrow for day 15.